So welcome to my makeup collection. We are going to start at the top of my Alex drawers and work our way down through them. Um, on top sits my lovely pig, which is from NYX. I get so many questions about this. It is actually a utensil holder. It is not designed for makeup, so I've had to sign of put things in the bottom of it to make it sit properly really. Um, but it's worth the effort because I love the way it looks. In here we just have all the base brushes really. I've got quite a lot of Spectrum ones. There is quite a lot of real techniques in here. I do like the bold metal ones and just some standard ones as well. I don't really have that many high-end ones um, in here. Um, I do have the multi-use real techniques which is incredible. I love this for bronzer. The only high-end one I really have is the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Face Brush which is amazing. I use this all the time for cream bronzer. Um, it makes it blend beautifully. For eye brushes, I keep them in here. This is just a little candle pot. I'm sure it was from Home Bargains or something like that, um, but I thought it was cute. I keep my PS Love PS Pro collection, the Primark ones in here. I did really like these, but they they are completely our nightmare to wash. It's, it's not worth the effort. Um, other than that, most of my brushes are Spectrum brushes. I love the finish of them. I think the quality of them for the price are incredible. Plus the fact that you have different colour options. The best ones are probably the A06 and the B06, which is this one. So basically application and then blend it out. I also have a fair few Real Technique brush, either the Bold Metals collection or just the original collection. And things like, um, I've got a MAC 217 in here. And the brushes you get automatically with the naked palettes which are actually really good. The little blue house back here is in fact a light. This is from Next a couple of years ago and I keep all of my base products and a few fancier lipsticks in this clear container which was from TK Maxx. You will find that quite a lot of my things are from TK Maxx because they're good for the price. Um, so I keep my setting spray and my primer up here. So I use the Jars Cosmetics Peach Setting Spray and the super fancy YSL Touche Clap Blur Primer as my base. That is the only primer I own. For foundations, we have NARS Sheer Glow. We have the Lancome Tint Odor Idol Ultra Wear, which is my new current favourite. That is incredible. This is also new, the It Cosmetics CC Cream. And I also have MAC Studio Sculpt Foundation in the shade NC15, but I rarely use this. I just don't like the finish of it. Something about it, I just don't like. But that is all my bases in there. We then have my Most Used Concealer, the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, and the Pink Color Corrector. They just live next door. We have my three Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. We have Hell's Bells, which is this stunning purple shade. Sexy Sienna, which is this orangey, nudie sort of colour, which is beautiful over summer. And the one that I use all the time just now, which is Very Victoria. Again, beautiful. We also have a couple of YSLs up here, which are just ridiculously fancy. So we are going to come back to the top drawer, but for now we will go into my face and lip drawer. So in here, um, all of the plastic containers are all from TK Maxx. It's just lipstick holders and this three plastic divider. So we keep, well, I try to keep um, blush, highlighter, and then just additional extras in here, but it's a bit jumbled just due to the size. So we'll work our way through these ones first and then we'll move on to lips. This one here is without a doubt my most used. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Mood Exposure. It is the perfect, not a blush, blush, mauvey, pinky perfection. And I use this one all the time. Closely followed by Max Blush Baby, which is equally as beautiful. This one's more pink in tone when you swatch it. But again, it has the same effect. These are the perfect blush if you're pale like me and struggle to find a blush that doesn't make you look like Coco the Clown. Um, so you can be quite heavy with these and not need to worry that you will look silly. So I love both of these. Um, we also have 
this one here people are obsessing over on my instagram at the moment it's the estee lauder blush in the shade witty's peach it yeah it's it's stunning to look at i haven't actually used it that much to be completely honest but i do hope to use it more because yeah it's, it's silly to have it and not use it I also have this one, this was a MAC limited edition one from Christmas Past, this was from their Sweet Cut Nutcracker collection, it is in the shade Sweet Vision. I don't understand why this was in their Christmas collection, to me it's much more of a summery blush, but it reminds me a lot of NARS Orgasm, it's a stunning peachy shimmery shade, it's really nice. We also have Becca's Flower Child in here, it is lovely, this is also new. Um, I love Becca blushes. I have another palette which I'll show you later, but I, I really enjoy this one. It is nice. Other than that, we have this one which I refuse to throw away. This is my first ever high-end blush. I got this on holiday. My gran bought me it. And it's one of these ones that change colour. Just to suit. It is really beautiful. I used it lots when I first had it, but I've not been reaching for it at all recently. But I will not part with this. It is just too sentimental. The only other, other ones that we have in here are these two. This is my only drugstore blush I suppose now. This is the H&M blush in the shade Apricot. It's just a sort of peachy orangey shade um, that I don't use all that much but I'm hoping to use it more this year. And the only other one we have in here was this one. I don't actually consider this a blush. It's more of a finishing powder I suppose. I got this ages ago in their wash and dry collection so this isn't permanent it's in the shade pearl blossom and it's just a pinky highlighting glowy finish it is beautiful i was obsessed with it last year so if you go back on my blog post you'll see this crop up time and time again because i did love it i do still love it i just don't use it as much anymore for highlighter, I have quite a lot. Um, this is the cult classic, the Sleek, what is this actually called? Solstice palette. Um, I literally just used the bottom two. I don't even bother with the other ones, but I can completely understand the hype behind the hype around this one. It is beautiful. I get it. So it's it's staring. This was from their Christmas collection two years ago. This is actually now a, a permanent release they've just recently released this this is the MAC highlighter in the shade oh darling and it is the beautiful gold finish which to be honest with you is a little bit too dark for my skin tone it's it's just a bit much but at the time I didn't know that so yeah I bought it without really thinking I use this one a lot more and um, this is in the shade beaming blush from the same range but it's been out a little bit longer it's dual finish it's a goldeny peachy color and it is just perfection, especially if you're pale. Not something that you would typically go for. So if you have a lot of highlighter and you want to try something new, this one I would highly recommend. What else do we have? Oh, this one. This is the cult classic. Everybody has this one. This is Champagne Pop, which I thought was going to be too dark on my skin. But somehow I managed to pull it off. It's not the most beaming highlight on my skin, but it is just perfection it's so nice and I find myself reaching for it all the time so it, I must like it this one is definitely more if I'm feeling pale or if I really want to stand out it is the L'Oreal True Match highlighter, highlighter in the shade Icy Glow and it is exactly that it is a pure white highlighter do not let that peachy shade fool you it is white and it is a good one it's one of my only it's my only drugstore oh wait no I've got this one as well We've got this one. This one I use more for body. This is a new look bronzed highlighter and it is pretty. It is pretty but it's definitely more of a body for me. I don't find myself ever reaching for it on face. Um, and then we have this one as well. This one I don't find myself reaching for either. It's the Urban Decay Afterglow highlighter in the shade Sin. It is stunning but at the same time don't find myself reaching for it. I don't think it transfers very well when using a brush. And there's other ones here that are, perform better in my opinion. We also have these two. This is the Sleek Wow 3 Way Highlighter. You can use this as a primer or a highlighter. It is cream. Well, not even cream, it's liquid. And it really is the icy glow. 
I use this on days where I'm not wearing loads of makeup but want to glow for the gods and it really is, it's beautiful. And this is only about £6, it is amazing for the price tag. And on the other end of the spectrum we have the, the Cover FX drops which are ridiculously expensive but like liquid gold, it is just so beautiful. I'm going to swatch it just now to six. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's, you can't flop, flop, fault that swatch. It really is just the most perfect finish. We also have a blush in here. I completely forgot about these ones. Um, these are my cream brushes. This is the Chanel blush in the shade um, Revelation. This is the one that changes. So it's a cream, but then when you apply it, it turns into powder, which is really cool. And I love it on really hot days when I just, I just can't be bothered. It's good. And this one, um, Bagsy, is a cream, true cream bronzer. It's this round sort of finish. It's a fun product, um, new to the collection. So I'll just throw that in here. Um, these ones are like through like two or three in ones. So there's the OP Olivia Pomolero collection, which I'm sure everyone's got. This was a TK Maxx purchase. Really nice, used it all summer, but I've not used it in a while. I should really consider if I'm gonna keep it, but it is really nice. These two I definitely need to get rid of. I never use these. This was one of my first ever high-end purchases that I bought myself. This is the Naked Flush palette in the shade Streak. And it is really nice, but just because of its layout, because of where it is, I just, I never use it ever. And it's it's just silly to keep, to be honest. Um, and this one's the same and it's also broken. So this one just needs to be disposed of. I did try and reset it, but I didn't do a very good job of it, as you can see. So yeah, it, it really should go in the bin. That one is in the shade Strip. The only thing left from the side really is this. This is the Chanel Tan de Chanel bronzer. It is a cream and it is my go-to for days where I want to look like I've actually got a tan, um, which is a miracle to be honest. Um, but it just, it blends out flawlessly. I don't ever feel patchy or orange with this on. So as much as the packaging is ridiculously huge, it's just silly. And as much as it's expensive, it is 100% worth the cost if you're pale and looking for a good bronzer. Right now for lipsticks, we could probably be here all day. Most of my lipsticks, like everything, are higher end. I do have a few drugstore. The 17 Mega Mattes are incredible. And I also have a couple of the Rimmel's ones. I have number three, number 30, and number 107. All of which are nice. Oh, and there's this one as well. Um, I love this. This is my go-to autumn shade. It is just perfection in a tube. It is Maybelline's Divine Wine and it will live there until it's gone. I won't ever part with that one. It's just so nice. Um, other than that, we have a lot of MACs. All of my MAC lipsticks have been swatched over on the blog. I am going to leave a link to that because we're not going to go into those. They all look the same to me and yeah, just finding them would be a complete nightmare. Um, other than that, we have a few of the Urban Decay. I've got three of the old packaging, three of the new packaging. The three from the old, I believe, are all still available. We have Jilted, Native and Rush. Native and Rush are both a nudie, pinky, pretty boring colour. Um, but Jilted is like a dual chrome pinky purple shade, which is beautiful. It's really nice. I believe there is an eyeshadow to go with that one in one of my palettes as well. I'm sure we'll find that. Um, for my very high-end ones, we have a Dior, which is more of like a glossy type finish, but without the stick. It's really beautiful. It's really nice on nights where I just can't be bothered with a full face. This is my Chanel. It's got the fancy click packaging. It is in the shade 174. They don't name them, um, but it's just a nude because that is my most reach for. Now, talking about my absolute most reach for, this is the Dior lipstick in the shade 772. It is a matte finish, and those of you who follow me pretty much anywhere will know that this has been the obsession since Christmas time. I bought this three days after Christmas with my vouchers, and I have not stopped wearing it since. It really is the most perfect lipstick. I love it to bits, and yeah. 
most used. Um, other than that, my three newer ones, we have Backtop, which I'm sure everybody has, Hitchhack, which is, Hitchhike, sorry, um, which is also a cult classic, and Perversion, which is the black lipstick. I don't really know what I was thinking that day when I bought that one, but hey, it's good to have something different, and it was good on Halloween. For liquid lipsticks, I have three of Jeffree Star's formula. We have Celebrity Skin, I'm Nude, and Doll Parts. Love the formula, don't really like him as a person anymore, so I've not felt inclined to buy from his brand. Instead, I have been buying from Kat Von D, whose liquid lipsticks are actually better in my opinion. I didn't think I'd be able to find ones to beat Jeffree's, but without doubt, Kat's ones are better. We have Bow and Arrow, Lolita 2, Double Dare, Outlaw and Vampira. Double Dare for me is stunning. I love this one. It is like the perfect, totally different, pinky, orangey, nudie, bizarre colour that no one, no one else really has. And then there's Lolita 2, which is just the perfect orangey nude shade, which again is just perfection. These ones are great. If you have any of these you will understand the obsession but I would happily buy more and more of these ones. Other than those ones we have a few knits which I don't really use anymore. A Too Faced one just because I don't really know why I still have this. I never reach for it. I don't like the formula. And we have a cute little bagsy one which is new. So yeah. This is the eye drawer and um, there's also a few lips bits and perfume bits in it. It's the most dramatic drawer. Um, everything lives in here just because it's the first deep drawer. I keep my palettes and my pencils in again something from TK Maxx. It's a divider along with these ones from Ikea. Um, so first off we have the MAC palettes. My MAC palettes are totally not really disorganised at the moment, they really are. We have a sort of half full one, a six. And a four, I really like the formula of them, they're really good. So I like to have different options for traveling and for using, things like that. Um, and then I also have a full limited edition one um, from the Brooke Shields collection, which is perfect. There's loads of permanent ones in here, but there's a few limited edition. This one, for example, is such a nice shade. It's like the perfect glowy, you really can't see that on my swatched hand but it, it is really beautiful in the eye. I love this palette. I also have two of the Naked Decay, Arp, uh, sorry, Arma Decay Naked palettes. We have the pink one, which is my first one, the one that's used the least. And we have the Naked Arma Decay original palette, which is my most used. That half-baked shade I just live for completely and utterly. I will be hitting pan on that shortly. And I will need to take a moment just to cry hysterically at what I'm going to do without it. <laughs> I'll just rebuy another one, not going to lie. Um, this one should in theory probably live under there. It doesn't get used very much but it fits in here. Um, but this is the Mundos palette, again from Urban Decay. We then have three of the Too Faced palettes. We have the Peach one, which looks like this. The Semi Sweet. Yeah, semi sweet here, and then the original here, which are both again really good. I love the formula from the two face original, like the, the the permanent collection. I then have my two beautiful um, Charlotte Tilbury palettes. We have Dolce Vita, and this one's Vintage Vamp. Sorry, and this one is Dolce Vita. The, the formula of these it is absolutely incredible. They blend in beautifully. The finish, they last all day. So thank you to, so much to Angela from Beauty by the Bunny. She sent me these, which was very kind of her. Back here we have the quads. This is D the Dior quad. Um, this is, again, limited edition from their latest, uh, bleh, bleh, I can't speak now, from their latest range. Really like this one. And we also have one from Benacloss here, which is such good quality. For being drugstore, this is just so nice. I love the finish of this. This is the one in the shade Coffee and Cream. 
Then we have singles over this side. So we have things like the Clinique one in the shade Willow Pop. We've got a few matte ones, some more Benicloss, some 17. The 17, the singles from 17 are incredible. They are so good. Show, show you. I mean, you can't fault that. That is just amazing for the price. Those are about two pound odds. In this one, we have toppers. So things like Urban Decay in the shade Scorpio, which is a black with like a greeny gold glitter. We have more toppers like this. And then we have full on glitters like these ones. And here we have the stick shadows, um, liners, things like that. Um, this one is without doubt my favourite. This is the By Terry on the Black Star in the shade Bronze Moon. It is just the perfect colour, but very stupidly expensive. I wouldn't say I regret buying it. It's not something I would say because I would still be wanting it now if I hadn't bought it. But still, this one from Kiko in the shade 6 is exactly the same. Like, look. I mean, oh, and this was £30 and this one was about £5. How depressing. But again, I would have wanted it. I believe this one, though, I think it's this one, is the shape, the one that's a dupe for the, the other one that's part of that line that everybody obsesses over. Mystic, is it Mystic? I can't remember. But yeah, all the liners and things in here. We also have the glittery glam crystals from Collection. These are incredible as well. In this one, we keep the liners. We have a lot of matte ones. The matte ones are really good. I also really like this one from Lancome in the shade Beige Rose. It's just the perfect liner. And yeah, there's not really much else going on in there. Back here, um, we keep all the palettes that do not fit standing up, which is my biggest bugbear because I really wish they, they stood up so that I would use them more because they're effort to get to. Uh, we have the Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette, which is beautiful. I do actually use this quite a lot, surprisingly. When you look at it, you wouldn't think, but I do reach for it quite a lot, even though it's underneath there. We also have the Electric palette, which again, stunning. There's the Gillette shade that goes with that lipstick. It's the same sort of idea. It's really pretty. It's a really nice palette, the silver is stunning, they're really good to work with but not something you would wear every day. What else have we got? We've got the Makeup Forever uh, pop out palette so you can put whatever you want into here. These are Makeup Geek shadows which I need to use more, I've barely touched them. I'll leave a link to those ones below as well and we have just things that I've probably popped out because I didn't like the packaging. Yeah, I really don't like cardboard packaging so I tend to pop things out and leave them in here. Also under here we have the Vice palette. This was my first like Ur Urban Decay palette um, that I invested in and I, I loved it. I loved it. I still love it. Lucky is such a beautiful shade. I really like gold. So yeah, this is perfect for traveling and it's got all the options you need and that massive mirror. I won't throw it that way simply because of that. This is the one that I take with me. We also have the Violet Voss Holy Grail palette, which again, I love, but I just wish I could close the drawer with it standing up because then I would use it all the time. It's just so lovely. Oh, I love that palette, it's so good. And also under there, we've just got a few bits and pieces that just don't really know where to go. So yeah, keep them all under there. I keep my perfumes along here just to make life a bit easier. But other than that, drawer done. So in the last drawer I'm showing you is just nail varnish. I love nail varnish. It's slightly obsessive. I love the Barry M. The Barry M's are amazing. They all fit very nicely. I also love these ones from NYX. That one is probably my ultimate favourite. It is in the shade Rose Gold God and it is just perfection. The rest of them are like high-end ones, which I've managed to get from TK Maxx for $3.99. So we have things like Nails Inc. We have True Brit London. This one is Eve Snow. We even have a NARS one here, which I also got from TK Maxx. But yeah, this is where all of these ones live. Other than that, we have makeup that I don't really reach for anymore back here. This one, 
again, Jeffree Star is humongous. There is no place else in my collection that this will fit. It's just oversized, which makes me never want to use it because it doesn't fit anywhere. We also have things like the Mary Lou, which I broke to smithereens and now smells like antiseptic because I set it with uh, surgical spirits. So, yeah, it's not a nice smell. I need to just repurchase that one. And we have just a few bits and pieces that I just want to hold on to, but realistically, I don't like all that much. This one actually is really good for going to be summer. This is in the shade Robust Rhubarb. It's a Clinique Chubby Stick, which I do actually really like that one. Underneath here we also keep brushes that I'm not using at the moment. Things like this for the blog. And the On The Run palette, which I also don't use very much. But other than that, that's that drawer done. So the only drawer really left to show you is this one. It looks empty because it is empty. I take things from the other drawers and put them into this drawers to encourage me to use them over the month. So I've put everything away to show you everything they're placed, but normally this drawer would have lipsticks in it. It would have blush, bronzer, just bits that I'm focusing on using on. Um, and it all, I also keep my palettes back here. So there's things in here that remain in here. It doesn't matter what time they, this is where they live because I only keep a couple of them or I only have one of them or they don't fit in anywhere else. So in here we have the base part. So this is just odds and ends, concealers, primers. I also have more primers in here. My pencil sharpener for sharpening my pencils. We have the Naked Urban Decay Basics palette, which is my most used. I used to use this for my eyebrows, but I still use this for my brow bone highlight and I'll use the shades all the time. We also have mascaras. I have three going at the moment. This is brand new. This one could do with going in the bin. <laughs> and this one, which is fine at the moment. So this is a, um, the Lancome Grandiose Liner, which is very fancy. Even its wand is fancy. It's different shaped. Look at that. There's no need for it to be that fancy. It wasn't anything amazing. I don't know if I'd repurchase it. This, I've not even tried yet. But this one is good. I constantly repurchase this. We also have my liner, which I use all the time. This is a 17 liquid liner. I swear by this stuff. And we also have my brow products, my three brow products. We have the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, the Ready Set Brow, and a brow wax just to set them in place. On this side we keep setting powders, so we have the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Diffused Light. I use this for under my eyes when I want it to look super bright. So down this side we have setting powders, so we've got the baking powder that I use, the Vichy Derma Blend. To kick off my bake I always use the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Diffused Light, which is this yellowy colour, which is really beautiful for brightening. I also use the Essence All About Matte Powder, which again is stunning. I've gone through God knows how many of these. I don't use another one. And this one is actually a finishing powder. I use this over the top of my blush and my bronzer before highlight, just to give a, blow, a glow and to sort of blend things out a bit. It is beautiful. I really like this one. Um, that is in the shade Faint and Fabulous, by the way, and it's limited edition, which is the evil of all things matte. So under here we have things that just do not fit in anywhere else. These things stress me out. So we have the blush and bronzer palette. To be fair, I love this. It is worth the effort. It is five full size products in one palette and I love it. This is new and I've been obsessed with it recently. We also have this sleek contour palette in the shade light. I have used the hell out of this. This is hit pan on a major. Yeah, I love this one. Really good and I reach for it constantly. We also have the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit, I believe it's called. Yeah, in Surreal Light. I barely use this, but it is the perfect Instagram product. I mean, look at it. There's just no need for a product to look that beautiful. And then we have the Too Faced Co Coco Contour Palette, which is almost hit pan on. These two shades are just stunning. I love them. I never use those ones, so definitely worth it for these two. Other than that, behind these, we just have doubles of things, um, pumps for things, lids for things, samples, candles, just odds and ends that don't fit anywhere else. 
only other thing is this, which again doesn't fit anywhere. This is the Becca blush palette from the Christmas collection. It is beautiful, especially the middle shade is my most used. That is in the shade Songbird, which is actually a permanent one, so you can still buy that. So I'm going to refill the drawer and I'll show you what it looked like when it's full. So here is how it looks when it's got stuff in it. I've put in a palette, a couple more palettes, some lipsticks, some lip liners, some eyeliners, some blush, some contour. So yeah, that's where I do my face from every day. And then obviously if I need something from other drawers, I'll just reach in and grab them. It just makes life easier having everything in all in one place.